Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello guys, today we will deal with module number 1 in which we will deal with a topic that is very simple various types of resistances, capacitances and inductances. Now coming to the part of that various types of R, L and C that is resistances, inductances and capacitors. We will deal with active and passive devices, how they are different than others. Our outline for this particular topic is active and passive devices, that is the first part. Second part is types of passive devices that are nothing but resistances, capacitance and inductors. Third one is types of resistances, various types of resistances are available on the basis of ratings of power and material and so on. Then the types of capacitances that we have to deal with, then we have to deal with the types of inductors and end of this particular session. Now let us start with active devices versus passive devices. How can I differentiate devices into active devices and passive devices? Active devices for example, we consider diode, we consider transistor and the passive devices in which we can consider resistances, capacitances, inductors. So all these are passive devices. Let's see what are the characteristics of active and passive devices. First is we do need external power supply for the operation of active devices rather in the passive devices we do not need any external power supply for its operation. Active devices basically form the energy in the form of voltage or current. So they produce the energy, the flow, the amount of charges so that current will flow. So either current or voltage they get form to form energy. Rather in passive devices it is not possible to form the energy rather it is possible to store or dissipate the amount of energy. A resistor is used to dissipate the amount of energy or power and the capacitor and inductor used to store the amount of energy in the form of flux and charge respectively. Third point is this active devices provide us power. For example, if you consider amplifier, the amplification gives you the amount of power at the output which can drive another circuit as well. But in passive devices, it is not possible to provide the power to the circuit. So there is no power gain as such. In the last part, unlike passive devices, active devices are generally unidirectional. For example, if we consider a diode, diode may we can conduct the current from anode to cathode only, not from cathode to anode. For example, in the form of transistor, the current will flow from collector to emitter, base to emitter in one direction only. It is not possible at the same time of operation, it is not possible to flow the current from both the direction. It is not possible at the same time of operation to flow the current from both the direction. So this is the difference part of active devices and passive devices. Rather in passive devices, if we consider resistor, capacitors and inductors, it is possible to flow the amount of current or to have voltage in opposite polarity in both the directions. So these are nothing but the bidirectional devices, passive devices and active devices are generally unidirectional devices. So this is nothing but the difference between active devices and passive devices, very basic form of this particular session. Now the second part of this session is types of passive circuit devices. So passive devices are nothing but of three types. One is resistor, another is capacitor and third one is inductor. We will concentrate on the resistor first. Basically resistor is nothing but the ratio of voltage per unit current. So voltage divided by current which gives you the resistance. So how can I define the resistance? Resistance is used to oppose the flow of current. Resistance is used to oppose the flow of current. This is nothing but the symbol of resistances. 
This obeys the Ohm's law that means this resistance is used for your linear characteristics of current and voltages because as voltage changes current has to changes so resistance will be constant. This is an element so resistance has to be constant. So to keep resistance constant if voltage variation then same amount of current variation has to be there that means voltage and current linear relationship will get followed. So it obeys Ohm's law because Ohm's law obeys linear characteristics. This is in dissipative in nature that means the power gets dissipated it is not used to store the amount of energy. This is how we have learned about the resistors. Second type of passive device is capacitors. This capacitor C is equal to charge divided by voltage. Capacitor basically made up of two parallel plates metal and in between we do have dielectric. If we zoom this part then we will be getting that at one particular parallel plate we will be having positive charge at another parallel plate we will be having negative charge. So depending on the amount of number of charges and the voltage across that parallel plates we will be getting the capacitance. Capacitance is nothing but the capacity to hold the charges such that we will be getting the potential difference that is V across these two parallel plates. Now unlike these resistances this capacitance is a non-linear device. It shows the non-linear characteristics between charge and this voltage. Now as this is storing element this stores the amount of energy in the form of charges as the number of charges at both parallel plates increases then I can increase the amount of energy which is being stored inside this capacitor in the form of charges. So basically in the form of charges means there will be potential difference which gets increased if charge getting increased. This is how we have learned the capacitor. In short if we are dealing with the capacitors, capacitor basically blocks the DC signal and allows to pass AC signal. The basic fundamental of this capacitor is if you are dealing with this capacitor, this capacitor gives you XC that is nothing but capacitive reactance which is nothing but 1 upon 2 pi F into C. Now for DC F is equal to 0. For DC F is equal to 0 so XC that is capacitive reactance will be infinite and this will act as a open circuit. So for DC signal my capacitor will act as open circuit and that is why this blocks DC. Understood? Very simple. Now we will move towards the next part of the passive devices that is nothing but the inductor. Now in the inductor unlike capacitor it blocks AC and allows to pass DC. How? Let's see. L is equal to flux phi divided by current I. This produces the magnetic flux inside this particular coil. This is nothing but the coil like solenoid. So one coil which is wounded around the core which forms the inductor. Depending on the material, depending on the application, we will be having different types of inductors that we will study later on. Now as far as inductor is concerned, the inductive reactance XL is equal to 2 pi into F into L. So if we deal with the DC circuit, then F is equal to 0, XL will be 0. If XL is equal to 0, this will act as a short circuit. So short circuit means that there is no opposition to flow of current. So current will directly flow. That is why this is blocking your AC signal which is having finite frequency but allows to pass DC with resistance is equal to 0. Practically it is having some internal resistance that is small r associated with this inductor coil because inductor is nothing but a metal wire which is wound on the core. So metal is itself having material resistance. So that has small value of resistance. So resistance plus this inductor will give you a coil and that is called as the inductive property. 
दिस आर नथिंग बट दी पासिव डिवाइसेस सो फार वी हैव डिस्कस नाउ वी विल मूव टुवर्ड्स ईच एंड एवरी पासिव डिवाइसेस एंड इट्स टाइप्स लेट अस सी फर्स्ट दी रेजिस्टर एंड इट्स टाइप बेसिकली रेजिस्टर इज अ पासिव डिवाइस व्हिच इज यूज्ड टू अपोज द फ्लो ऑफ करंट एंड दैट इज व्हाई आर इज इक्वल टू वी अपॉन आई now as far as the resistor is concerned this regulates the flow of electron through conductive material as the material is conductive there is some flow of charges flow of electron but due to material property we oppose the flow of this electron flow of this charge we restrict the velocity of the flow of this charge that means we are resisting the flow of charge that means current now we will move towards the types of resistances first is carbon composition resistant now here the composition is made up of carbon graphite here manufactured from graphite and non conducting ceramic powder two materials are used first is graphite and second is non conducting ceramic powder now the ratio of these two material will decide the value of the resistance ratio of the carbon dust and ceramic decides the value of the resistance this particular type of resistance which gives you low to medium power range ka resistance that is why we are saying that this is nothing but low to medium power resistance so the rating of this resistance is limited to medium range of power the most advantageous part of this carbon composition resistance is cheap and commonly used in electronic circuits now very advantageous part of this part of resistor is it is very cheap of low cost and it is commonly used in electrical circuit and that is why in all electrical circuit we are using carbon composition resistor because it is very cheap and abundant available in nature second is film or ceramics resistor which are very very small in space consist of metal film carbon film and metal oxide film where metal oxide will act as a resistance part which resist the flow of current in that particular material resistor value is controlled by increasing the thickness and deposited film whatever carbon film we are using metal film we are using metal oxide film we are using depending on the thickness your resistance value will increase advantage of this particular metal oxide film which gives you the advantage for this resistor is high valued resistor that is up to 10 mega ohm i can create the value of resistor up to 10 mega ohm the third part is wide wound resistor this wide wound resistor is made up of winding thin metal alloy wire on insulating ceramic former so insulating ceramic former will act as a core and this metallic alloy wire will be wounded on that insulated ceramic former and this will give you resistance of low precision value so if there is any change in the resistance and which gives you change in the value of the current and that i want to note we can easily note by this type of resistance and the last but not the least is semiconductor resistor where we are making use of the semiconductive property which gives us very high precision and it can be operated for high value of the frequency operation so these are nothing but the types of the resistor let's move towards the type of the inductors and the type of the capacitors let us move towards the type of inductor basically inductor is formed with one core and one wire which is wound on that particular core so there can be different material for cladding different material for core different material for winding as well first one is iron core fixed inductor here 
आयन इज अ मैग्नेटिक प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ आयन वी आर मेकिंग यूज टू फॉर्म द इंडक्टर सो आयन कोर इज प्लेस एंड ओवर विच वी वाउंड दायर एज अ सोलोनॉइड विच गिव यू द प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ द इंडक्टर सेकेंड वन इज एयर कोड फिक्सड इंडक्टर नाउ हियर एयर इट सेल्फ विल फॉर्म ए कोर एंड ओवर विच वी फॉर्म द स्प्रिंग लाइक नेचर विच गिवज यू सोलोनॉइड लाइक स्ट्रक्चर विच गिवज यू द इंडक्टर एंड दैट इज वाई वी नेम दिस एज एयर कोड फिक्सड इंडक्टर विच इज हैविंग फिक्सड वैल्यू ऑफ द इंडक्टन्स एंड द थर्ड वन इज फेराइड कोड फिक्सड इंडक्टर नो हियर वी आर जस्ट चेंजिंग द कोर टाइप हियर इंस्टेड ऑफ आयन कोर वी आर यूजिंग फेराइट कोड and this ferrite core which gives you the magnetic property which can be used to form different type of the inductor as well now we'll learn the last part of this session is nothing but types of the capacitor so we'll have to learn four types of the capacitor first one is ceramic capacitor second one is electrolyte capacitor that we generally use in your lab session one with long leg and one is short leg so this will be having the plus and minus sign into our circuit as well third one is variable capacitor for example varactor diode so there is some knob which is placed to, to change the value of the capacitor such that i can change the distance between two plates and in this way we can change the value of the capacitance because capacitance is nothing but this capacitance value is nothing but epsilon a divided by d this is nothing but the capacitance value we can change the value of the capacitance by changing the value of the distance between two plates and this is how we use the variable capacitor paper capacitor in which we are placing paper as a dielectric material in between two parallel plates so this is how we have learned about types of capacitors types of inductors types of resistors and active and passive devices as well i hope you like this video if you like this video then do like share subscribe and comment ikeda channel thank you so much